Oh, do you know what bursting and smoothing is? Well, I sure as heck didn't until I talked to my buddy, Nate Finley. He's the PM at Microsoft who owns this feature. It's unbelievable what uh, bursting and smoothing can allow you to do. And it has been around for a while. We just had no idea that it was what really made Power BI so fast was this amazing new tech. And I can't wait to tell you more about it. Okay, so before we go any deeper, you have to first understand what the heck is a Fabric workload, okay? So Fabric is gonna be running all of your data science, data analytics, and, and data engineering components, okay? So all of this stuff runs on the same compute uh, nodes and they call them CUs, okay? But because it all runs on the Fabric multi-workload cluster or MWC, you can really start to take those labels and those icons off and you can just think of them as blocks of compute or CUs, okay? Now, if we think about how, how do we, we run data in a given day, if you look at a lot of these analytic spaces, it, you're gonna see different usage patterns and load patterns that are gonna be happening inside of your clusters, okay? Now, classically speaking, it breaks out somewhere along these lines where you've got your data loads in the morning your report consumption in uh, throughout the day. Data science is often broken up into the evening when nobody's really doing stuff so they could do some kind of crazy stuff. And then you'll even see some data loads start to like creep in at the end of the day, all right? Now, this is all well and good, great. You only have to have one server to do all of these things, but that causes some problems. So if we think about where how capacities are priced and how, how they get loaded and how you scale them up, you get some real kind of run into some issues and challenges here because often you're gonna see your capacity is gonna really start to cap out, you know, at, at that base or smaller level. And as you go up, the, the capacity is gonna double, but each time it doubles, it's actually gonna double in price. So if you're talking about like old school Power BI space, a P1 or an F64, you're really talking an F64 is five five grand, uh, an F128 is 10, or uh, an F256, $20,000 a month. I mean, that that's a significant uptick that goes on, right? What's really, what's, what's kind of almost worse in this situation is the amount of unused CU that you see in here, because you're paying for this service the whole time, right? Like, that is expecting you to, to be using it. And, and honestly, this is a bad diagram for that because the reality is, oh, it, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of additional compute that is out there and it's wasted. Well, so what are you gonna do? Uh, are you gonna go in and just like waste all this money? Most companies can't afford to do that. I don't think you should either. Classically, what a company would do is they go in and they, they it build into their operations, the ability to spin up nodes, attach a notebook to a node, run that node, and then you destroy that node at the end of it, right? So then you could like really get that micromanagement in place. Now, this is all well and good, but this becomes relatively kind of hard to manage. And, and only a, like only if you have a ton of engineering resource available can you really get this up and ready and tuned. And for those of you who can, awesome. Fabric allows you to do that. But for everyone else, let me run through how bursting and smoothing can help you out in a given day. I'm, I'm excited about this, okay? So let's take it step by step through the day, all right? So at, at midnight, you're gonna start your daily loads and th these loads are gonna start to fire up uh, and you're gonna start to see like the, the loads and the CUs start to get consumed. As 1 a.m. starts to approach, you're gonna see the loads start to increase but rapidly you're gonna get into the spot where like the smoothing starts to occur. Now, again, we don't necessarily want to have everything uh, in place here. So we're gonna say, let's pretend we just have that one unit, right? So we've got this baseline in place here. How does this work? So bursting allows you to borrow from the future 24 hours and use that compute now. So you can go ahead and you can use the compute and then the smoothing is gonna smooth that out over the course of the next 24 hours. So at 2 a.m. when you need all the compute, great, no problem. 3 a.m., you got your bursting up and running, you are good to go. This is just working just fine. 
4 a.m., same thing, right? You're you're in heavy loads. All the data is coming in. And at 5 a.m., you're doing the exact same thing. Well, we reach 6 a.m., and now we start to get into the smoothing, all right? So the load starts to drop. You, you finish all of your loads. You're now ready for users to come in. And now those those, pr- those CUs that you had paid start to get get paid off, okay? As user activity continues to increase, as people start to come in and start to use reports, we continue to see that smoothing occur and pulling those blocks forward, all right? Now, hey, when all of a sudden you got a whole bunch of users coming in and hitting your capacities, oops, all of you, you know, you start to see bursting occur again. So your users get a good experience. They're not left in limbo waiting for things to occur. They just get in and they have access to really fast information, okay? Now the user activity dips, we, we flow right into smoothing, okay? That continues on and oh, we get another burst up and we start to, to burst again. No problem, bursting keeps going, all right? Again, another dip, People are going. some people are going to lunch. We get to see that that dip occur, and then as like the day progresses, we see, you know, we see uh, usage go up and down, but bursting continues to or smoothing continues to smooth that data out over the course of the day, right? And that continues along until we reach the end of the day, and we can really see that, like, hey, you know what? Our capacities are starting to really get managed. Users are starting to log off, and this is all well and good, right? Well, we've got this huge block over here. What happens to all of this smoothing for the rest of my day? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now, we're going to see that once you reach that capacity for that day, all of a sudden, this is where we start to run into issues. So these data science workloads, when people come in and start to run them, they're actually going to get a message, an error message saying there's no CUs available Please scale up your capacity, turn on you know, dynamic scaling, that type of thing, so you can actually have additional CUs that are available for you, okay? So that's gonna kind of like run through through the rest of the day. We're gonna see like all of the workloads that you'd, you'd scheduled, so that all that data science stuff that, that we'd kind of talked about, that just gets keeps getting hit, keeps getting dinged, um, and then those end of the day quality checks run into a problem and uh, you know, even that end of the day load processes start to have an issue. Um, don't worry, we're going to get to it in just a second how we deal with this, okay? But then at the end of the day, you start over and you've got no more like trailing CUs that you, you need to, to clear out. And um, so you're all good. You could go through and you could do that exact same thing again, okay? Now, Technically speaking, it gets spread out over you know twenty four hours, and you know it's it's this is for illustration, illustrative purposes only. Okay, now, when your new day starts over, but you're saying, hey Chris, I still have a problem though. What do I do with those that compute that wasn't running, wasn't finishing, and how do I manage it? Well, that's the the magic, right? Like with fabric, and you can have these really small capacities. So instead of that larger capacity that you were like scaling by, now you get that smaller capacity and you give, you know, you hand that over to those data scientists or like the data engineers to do some prep testing so that you can, you can still have the compute running. And now you're spending a much smaller amount of data. Okay. This is your scale out situation. All right. And then that smoothing continues to occur. Uh, as you know, as the loads go and, and as that capacity is up and running. All right. Okay. So that's bursting and smoothing. I think this is incredibly useful because you do not have to go in and step all this DevOps, spinning up nodes, spinning down nodes, worrying about capacities, worrying about budgets, all that stuff. You can buy a block of compute. You can say, I'm going to buy an F64 or a 128 or whatever it is. And you can know, you can know that you're going to maximize the usage of that capacity throughout the day. And only when you start to get hit with those error messages about like, hey, I've got an issue. You should like come in and fix this or you're out of use. Do you need to like, like go in and actually uh, provision additional, additional capacities? Okay. Now, 
Personally, I find this super exciting. I hope you did too. If this was valuable for you, leave a comment down below, like, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff that, uh, you know, me as a, a lowly YouTuber, apparently I forget to ask about these things. So, uh, but if you found this helpful and I hope you did, uh, please let me know, share this with your friends and family. If you have other questions about bursting and smoothing, let me know. I'll be happy to answer those for you. Otherwise, you guys have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.